How do you use a vacuum pump? How do you pull a vacuum? Today we're going to be using Navax 4CFM cordless vacuum pump. A few different tools to help me establish a good vacuum. We're going to be talking about what a good vacuum is and different setups. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. This vacuum pump is a vapor pump and it pulls the moisture and contaminants out of the refrigeration system. Most equipment manufacturers recommend a vacuum of 500 microns or less prior to recharging the system. I always nitrogen pressure test and then I remove the nitrogen and then I hook up my vacuum pump. This is Navax 4CFM 15 micron cordless vacuum pump. And we've got three different connections here for our inlet port. We've got quarter inch, we got three eighths and half inch, and then we've got a little ball valve or a shutoff right here, which is really nice. On this pump, we've got a power button right here so we can turn it on and off. Our battery goes in right here. This is a DC pump and it gets pretty hot. It gets to about 180 degrees. Uh, this right here is where we fill up with our oil and this is where we drain the oil. Uh, we've got a bottle right here that came with the pump, which is really nice. I can put this in the carrying case with me or on the outside. And whenever I use the vacuum pump, say I had a burnout and it discolors the oil, uh, I've got a lot of contaminants, then I may need to replace the oil. So I can do that because I've got that little bottle with me. Here's the battery right here. And then we've got a battery charger. If you do buy this pump, make sure that you get two batteries. You want to make sure you have enough. So if you're pulling a vacuum on a really large system, Maybe you've got a few different vacuums to pull to the, on one day. You don't want to have to charge the battery in between jobs. You got an extra battery. We got the big boy hose. We got the quarter inch and the three eighths. This is the NHB one right here. NHB one big boy evacuation hose. So you can hook up your uh, you can hook up your core removal tool right here. You can hook this straight to the suction line service valve or liquid line service valve. You can remove the core, okay? And then you can shut it off, take this off, and you can hook up that big boy hose right here, right? So this is hooked to our suction line service valve. This is hooked to our big boy hose, okay? And then this is hooked, come over here and I'll show you on this connection here. And this is hooked to our pump. This is one way you can hook up the hose to the pump. See? Now this goes straight to our suction line service valve or liquid line service valve. If you want to hook up two, then you need to have two of these hoses and two of these removal tools. That's recommended. If you don't have two, you have one, it's going to be okay. Oh, don't drop that. All right, now I'm gonna disconnect this and I'm gonna show you another way to hook this up without using the core removal tool. Uh, it's recommended that you use the core removal tool, but some of you don't have a core removal tool. And I'm not gonna say that, oh, you're doing it the wrong way because I've done it without a core removal tool for many years and it's been fine. So middle hose, let me know if you use a core removal tool. Let me know if you just use your gauges. Hook this right here, your middle hose. And then these two gauges right here, these two hoses, your high side goes to your liquid line service valve, your low side goes to your uh, uh, suction side service valve. And so, and that's how you hook it up. And then if you've got a way to hook up a micron gauge, maybe you've got a uh, T here, then you can hook up your micron gauge and then you can figure out uh, what the micron level is. So that's two different ways to hook it up. We're going to go in the field and I'm going to use the core removal tool and the big boy evacuation hose. We're going to try to pull a vacuum uh, to 250 microns. Uh, some manufacturers recommend 400, 500, some of them 300. So I think anything below 500 is great. Uh, you want to make sure that when you do, um, you do pull down to the lowest number possible because the lower the number, the deeper, the better the vacuum. Uh, so, you know, 500 is better than 1,000. The higher the number, the worse the vacuum. So when you get a good vacuum, a micron level, that you take and you shut off the pump and you wait and see if that level rises, that will indicate a leak. So then you may need a pressure test and find that leak. Now, how are we going to measure uh, the microns? We're going to measure it with the 
uh, vacuum gauge, Navax vacuum gauge. This is the NMV1S. Really nice, and I'm gonna show you what it comes with. It comes with this right here, this carrying case. See that? And then it comes with this little adapter here, this quarter inch to quarter inch. And in the field, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, because I got my big boy hose, so my big boy hose is gonna to go to the 3 8 Navac, let me know where you came, came up with that, the big boy. Is it because it's a big hose? Why is it not the big man hose? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so this right here is our vacuum gauge. And this measures lower than atmospheric pressure. All right, and then we just turn it on like this, see? And we can set alarms. There's a lot of features with this. We can set targets. So whenever it hits a certain level, see it, it's reading 21. From atmospheric down to 1,000, it's not gonna take very long for you to pull down to that level. But from 1,000 to 250, that's gonna take a while. So you're gonna see that though, we're gonna go in the field. And this is the setup I'm using, it's really nice. I have used this vacuum pump on an eight foot ladder and it would have been hard for me to have an extension cord to go up that ladder. But this pump is such a lightweight pump that it worked out. Now it gets pretty hot, it gets to about 180 degrees, DC pump. This is our little bag here. So check it out, we're gonna go in the field. We're gonna go ahead and use this pump. I gotta pull a vacuum, look at that man. Look at that, you're, just, you're doing things, you can do things with this. If you wanna learn more about triple evacuation, take a moment, pause the video, and read this. You need to know how to use the core removal tool. I'm gonna to show you how to use this to remove the Schrader core, and I'm gonna show you how I hook the hose from this tool to the vacuum pump. Then we're gonna use that vacuum pump. So the core removal tool, has got a fitting right here that's 5 16 which we're not going to be using. Typically, you'll see this type of fitting used on mini split uh, service valves. We're going to be using the quarter inch because this is quarter inch right here. This is a liquid line service valve. So before we hook it up, we're going to pull this back. That way we can turn it, the ball valve off. Now we're going to hook up the connection here. You see that's hooked up now. Now to remove the Schrader core, we're going to take and make sure this back piece is tight, and then we're gonna turn this ball valve in the on position. Then we're gonna force this in, and then turn it. You'll feel that Schrader core. If it's got pressure, then it's gonna to wanna to push this outward. Uh, once you get the Schrader core out, and this is pulled back, then you'll be able to uh, disconnect the fitting on the very back. Now, I didn't get the Schrader core, so I need to reconnect this. You never want to have this off and turn this ball valve in the on position, especially if it's under a vacuum. So we're going to turn this back on, push it back in. And we're going to turn it slowly so we can, oh, there it goes. Now, turn this off, disconnect the back piece, and there's our Schrader core. All right, once your Schrader core is removed, you're going to take and connect this quarter inch right here. And then you can see the other side, this 3 8 And when you get ready to start the vacuum pump, we're gonna turn this shut off or this check valve on. And then here's our power button right here. And then on the other side, some vacuum pumps don't have a ballast, some do. Here's our ballast. We're gonna open this up. And then when we get down to 3000 microns, we will close it. All right, when you're ready and you're vacuum is done you can actually take and disconnect your hose here and then always make sure that you reconnect this piece on the back 
See that? Make sure everything's tight. Turn it back on. Push it in. Nice and tight. And now turn this back off. And then we should be able to remove our valve core removal tool. And that's how you hook up the valve core removal tool. Now let's use the vacuum pump. Got that hose connected. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to turn on the vacuum gauge and then I'm going to open the ballast, turn that shut off on, and then turn the pump on. You can hear it starting up. Super quiet. Once it hits 3,000 microns, we'll take and close that ballast. It's not going to take very long for it to hit 3,000. All right. 5,000. 4,000. Three thousand, we're going to go ahead and close the ballast, and now we wait, and you can put a timer on this, you can put an alarm on this, you know it's only been on a couple minutes, but we're already at below a thousand microns, now it's going to spin a little bit longer to get where we want which we've got our valves closed here so we're only vacuuming the line sets and the indoor coil so it's not going to take that long only been a couple minutes it's at 700 now i'm going to get to well 250 350 the lower the better and if you can get two of these removal tools right here and then you can get another hose, big boy hose. That's recommended for sure. But I've only got one, so that's what I'm using. And look, we're already at almost 500 microns. It's been, what, less than five minutes. So five more minutes, we'll probably be done. Uh, the battery lasts about 30 minutes. So it's recommended that you get two batteries if you do get this cordless vacuum pump. Look at that. Wow, almost below 500. All right, I'll give it a couple more minutes. It's been running maybe 10 minutes. We're below 250 microns, so that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the pump off. Now we're gonna put the core back in. We don't wanna lose our vacuum, so do not turn this shut off in the on position uh, before you screw this on so we got it screwed on turn it on push in screw the core back in to the service access fitting that's on the service valve and now we can take this piece off and there's our core and now always open the large line first Always open the suction service valve first. And then we're gonna open our liquid line service valve. We're gonna start the system up. Exciting. If you guys wanna know how to check out a pressure transducer, I've got a video on that. This unit uses a discharge and a suction pressure transducer. I'm gonna show you how to measure the input and output voltage of that transducer. If you need a good vacuum pump, Navac's got you covered. This thing is really cool and it works really well. If you need a vacuum gauge or a big hose to use, check out Navac's website down in the link in the description. Check out the links for the tools. If you need those, go check those out. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.